we are going to explore some ways to construct rhombi, rhombus, a rhombus. Um, so here are some basic properties in the rhombus. Um, it's quadrilateral, which automatically means it has four sides. Um, it's a parallelogram, which means a lot of things. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite angles are congruent. Adjacent angles are supplementary. Lots of things going on there. Um, the additional things of a rhombi, rhombus, all four sides are congruent, so they have to be the same size and length. And then here's a key feature. Diagonals bisect each other and also are bisecting at a right angle. So how can we use these properties to help us construct? Well, let's get a geometry sticky out. And I'm going to just show you a couple ways. It's not all the ways, but um, just to give you some ideas how you can use properties to help you think about constructions. So we're going to start with this one right here. Diagonals bisect each other at right angles. So let's just start with a segment. Um, and it doesn't matter how long the segment is. So dynamic uh, math tools allow you to change things after you're done. That's the key here. So here's my segment. And bisect means it, it they cross in the middle, the midpoint. So let's construct a midpoint. So I can do that a couple ways. I can select the segment, go up here to my geometry tools and go to construct and notice because I selected a segment I now have some choices and I'm going to choose midpoint okay so here's a midpoint and then it says the diagonals bisect each other at right angles so whatever the other diagonal is didn't say the diagonals are the same length they just said they're crossing at their bisection so I need to be at a right angle so I now want to construct um, a perpendicular through this point C so Let's uh, do construct, choose perpendicular, and here we have some directions. Select our point, select the segment, and now we have a perpendicular, right? So here is a perpendicular, and that perpendicular is going to be our uh, how our diagonals meet. Now, the diagonals have to be bisected, so if I put a point here, how do I guarantee that the other vertex is exactly equidistant from this perpendicular? I could do a reflection, right? So I'm going to take this point and I'm going to construct a reflection of that point. So it says select my objects. I want to select that object and that's all I want to select. And I want to reflect it over the other diagonal. And so now I have this point D prime. So watch what happens. I know these are now exactly the same distance because of my understanding of um, reflection. They are the same distance away. So now I've created my four vertices using this idea that the diagonals of a rhombus are bisecting each other and they are also forming a right angle. So because of that now I can hide my underlying constructs and to do that I'm going to select them, choose visible, and hide the object and now I just have my points and we let's get our polygon tool and we're going to construct our four vertices and there is my rhombus now notice it can be any rhombus because of the way I've constructed it but all of the properties about it are true right I could Depending on how I do this, I could make it be a square, which is a form of a rhombus, or I could just make it be a more general rhombus. So because I use this, I now have all possible rhombus. So that's one way is to work with this diagonal uh, property. So let's think of another way that we can construct a rhombus. Um, we kind of did some transformation there, so let's pull. Let's let's think about transformation here as well. Um, let's. Let's use, one of the things we want is that we want all four sides to be congruent. Well, what's the only shape that we know where there are segments that are congruent? Well, it's a circle. So if I get a circle, right, and I make two radii, and it doesn't matter where they are, but I'm going to make two radii, and these would now form the two sides of my rhombi, right? And I know the other two have to be the same, right? And I don't want to restrict them too much, so notice I can change the size. So I know these are congruent and I just now need two also congruent. So I'm going to hide this circle because I don't really need it anymore, right? 
So let's hide the circle. I only did that to get my congruence. So there's a couple ways I could think about this. I want to get um, congruent sides and I want opposite sides are also opposite angles are congruent. So I could do a reflection again. I could make this diagonal and now we could reflect all of those over that diagonal. Right, so I could choose my objects here and reflect them over this line. And now I have a rhombus. Okay, so that's one, one way I could do it. Right, so there's another way using reflection. Let's undo that and let's think about something else that we could do. I could, what's another a property? If we go back up here, they have to be a parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel. I could construct some parallel lines here. So let's um, construct a parallel and I want, notice my directions, I'm going to select, I want to go through this point and be parallel to that side. So now I have a parallel line and let's do another one. Let's construct a second parallel and I want it to go through this point now and be parallel to that one. And so now I have this intersection that I can construct and now you can see that I have a different type of rhombus. And I can, again, hide these constructs once I've used them. I don't need them anymore. And then just connect the other vertices and look at my rhombi. And I could do some measurements to verify that opposite angles are congruent, that these sides are parallel, that they're the same length, all the things you could do. But because we used properties, these are going to stay the same.